All right, folks. Hi there, and thanks for uh, tuning into the channel. This video is all about how I perform live with my iPad. Um, it's sort of an addendum to a Substack post that I've just shared. I will link to that in the description so you can take a look at it for yourself. But um, I wanted to kind of debrief on how I use the iPad in a live performance context, um, how I use it with the iPhone here, um, how they interact with the audio interface that I happen to use, um, and also just kind of walk through some of the choices that I make in terms of effects, in terms of uh, mixer routing, mixer choices, um, software that I use, uh, and just kind of speak to how I do what I do. Um, like I said, I've published a Substack post on this same topic with a lot more detail and screenshots and sort of technical information. But what I'm going to do in this video is uh, perform um, a piece that will actually be playing in a show of ours next week. Um, it's a part of our set list that we play all the time. And so as I play through that song, I'll just kind of talk through the choices that I'm making and exactly um, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And hopefully that will add a little more context um, to all of this. You know, uh, I could just jam without talking and you'll see my hands moving across this stuff, but I think it's a little more helpful to show exactly uh, why I do what I do. So without further ado, uh, why don't we just get into it? Um, so like I mentioned, everything here on the table uh, that, that you see is exactly what I take to um, a show. Uh, if I were to go play tomorrow, this is exactly what I would bring to the gig. Um, I've got the iPad Pro here. This is an 11 inch model from 2021 with the M1 chip. Uh, the I iPhone 15 um, off to the side here. And both of these are connected to uh, this interface um, in the back. It's the iConnectivity Audio 4C. I'll link to all this stuff in the description um, so that you can take a look at it yourself. Uh, but it's a really unique device. Um, I've not really seen anything else like it on the market. It allows you to connect two different computing devices um, on the two USB ports in the back. So uh, whether it's a tablet and a laptop or a tablet and a phone or two of each of those things, uh, all of the audio and MIDI that they transmit can be shared and routed um, between the two of them, however you like. So I've talked a lot about this in previous videos, and I think it's a little more um, you know, worth your time rather than talking about all of it right now. Uh, it's easier to just go click into those and, and check it out. So I'll link to those as well. Um, but I love that interface. It really allows for um, some really exciting, um, stuff to happen behind the scenes, um, well worth exploring. And then finally, kind of off the camera, just a little bit here is a Korg nano key studio keyboard. Um, I'll talk about how I use this versus the on-screen keyboard that you see within OM, uh, and why I like to have a little bit of separation there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it. Um, interface, phone, tablet, sometimes the keyboard, sometimes not. Uh, all of it's connected with two USB cables, and then there's just two um, TRS-balanced uh, uh, audio cables going to the house PA, and that's really it. Um, so next, I'll, I'll just go into the sessions within each of the devices here and show you what you're seeing. Um, let's start with the iPad. Uh, when I play with Hotel Neon, um, this is a really typical setup for me to use. So uh, I'm running a program called AUM. It's spelled A-U-M. I'll link to that as well. Uh, it's a fantastic kind of mixer, doll, um, effects host uh, that is just very easy to use. Um, you, you open it up, you can just add however many channels you want, and you add effects and um, mix buses and, and whatever else on each channel here. Um, so what I've done is set it up to have four different sound sources at the top here. I like to um, perform uh, with samples quite a bit. So this is a program called Sampler. Um, it's one of the all-time best uh, iPad apps, in my opinion. I, I think it's worth 
buying a cheap used iPad just to take advantage of this program. But it's how I it's how I use all of my samples live. Um, it's still my favorite sampler, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, I've got it loaded um, for each of the songs in our set. I have it loaded with six different samples, um, so I can play those. Uh, and it's you know all gestural and touchscreen, um, so very fun to play in a live context. Um, I've got that on one channel. That feeds into um, a channel strip from Audio Damage, just for basic EQ and compression, um, just to sweeten things up a little bit, make sure that the levels are good and that I can make quick tweaks on the tone if needed. Um, that channel strip is on almost every channel that you'll see. So uh, it's a really nice program, very CPU efficient, um, easy to use. And then on this channel, as well as every other one, you'll see three different sends. Um, send return A goes to a delay. Send return B goes to a reverb. And then send return C goes to a, a looper that I've set up and I'll talk through in just a second. So I can choose how much reverb and delay I wanna send on each one. And I can also send that audio uh, pre-volume fader um, over to the looper as well. The really nice thing about Aum, um, as I just mentioned there, you can choose which effects and which um, nodes here on the side you want to be pre and post fader. So I like to set up um, a couple of effects chains as a, as a pre fader um, send return channel. That way I can choose on any given sound how much of it I want to send to that affected signal um, independent of the actual you know, master volume for that channel. Just a nice way to, to um, set up different kinds of effects chains and, and blend those signals together. That signal, as well as all the other ones, go over to the master channel here, which I'll talk through um, in just a bit. Channel two is FabFilter Twin 3. This is a fantastic um, synthesizer app. It's uh, programmed here, in this case, I'm using it in a way that closely resembles a Moog, uh, mini Moog, so um, thick kind of bassy sine wave kind of stuff. Um, let me play that for you, actually. Yep, so I just like to have that. pure tone available. And when I open up the filter here, that lets in some of the, uh, some of the white noise um, as well. So also on this channel, I've got just a basic EQ um, to notch out anything that sounds a little crazy, you know, just in a live context, it's nice to have that quickly available. Channel three is set up to be uh, my drums and percussion. Um, I use a program called Audio Modern Playbeat 3. It's sort of set up to look like a classic step sequencer. You've got eight tracks, you can load those with whatever samples you want. Um, and it's, you know, kind of your classic um, uh, grid based view here. But the really nice thing about it is that for any channel, including all of them, uh, you can, you know, hit this button up top, it instantly shuffles everything around in a intelligent way to make interesting patterns evolve over time. And you can do that automatically to um, every x number of bars that you determine. It's a really fun, performative, uh, type of um, drum machine to use for iOS. Uh, highly recommend checking that out. And then down here at the bottom, I've got a couple different preset patterns loaded um, for each of the songs that we play. So I can quickly just flip between them, have fun, play around with the parameters here, and then just instantly flip back to the, uh, to the preset sound um, when needed. So that's Playbeat 3, and this runs into sort of a complicated um, chain, at least a little more complicated than the others. Uh, it, it hits a, a filter right out of the gate here. It's a low pass, high pass um, filter sweep. So 
As I go up, it engages high pass. As I go down, it engages low pass. Really nice way to quickly um, to quickly affect the sound uh, like that. And one thing too, before I keep going here, um, a really nice thing about um, this program that I'm running, uh, you can choose for each node on the uh, you know channel here, you can choose um, which effect parameter you want present uh, right there. So um, in this case on the filter, it's the cutoff, but I could also change that to be resonance or something else. Same goes for any other effect I've got mix, um, for instance, on some of these other ones. So I can quickly dial that up without actually opening the UI uh, of the effect itself. I don't have to leave this screen to make adjustments. Um, so anyway, back to the channel here, the drums hit the filter and then it goes into um, sort of a glitch stutter effect called Replicant 3 from Audio Damage. Um, you'll hear that in context in just a little bit. Uh, it also hits an additional stutter machine called Glitch Core. Uh, you'll hear that too. And then there's two different distortion effects, Fab Filter Saturn, as well as Audio Thing Lines. Um, I dial these in to taste uh, just to add some extra kind of grit and noise um, as things start to get louder. It's a nice way to build up uh, the sound. So I've got some mix uh, knobs here on the side to quickly dial that in whenever needed. And then again, the channel strip uh, to close it out, uh, followed by the sends um, to reverb delay and the looper. Channel four over here is uh, Piano Tech 8 from a company called Modart. Um, this is a really powerful synthesis engine that is built to model piano-based sounds. Um, so really important point there, it's not a sample library. Uh, this is purely a, a synthesis engine, so it uses significantly less RAM um, or CPU power uh, to play really realistic sounding piano sounds. Um, so uh, I've got that set up on channel four to mimic an upright piano that hits the channel strip and then the sends as well. Then just looking at the other half of the screen here. So like I said, send A is delay, B is reverb, um, two different types here to choose from. Uh, as needed. And then send C is a looper. Um, it's Loopy Pro receiving audio sent to uh, that mix bus C. I have four different loopers configured here, um, as well as high pass, low pass filters, and a little bit of reverb too. So uh, Loopy Pro is a fantastic program in its own right, but it's even cooler that you can load it as an AUV3 uh, within ARM. Uh, this is how I use it most of the time as a looper within uh, the ARM program itself. Also on that looping channel, I've got, you know, the channel strip, a filter, and this lo-fi effect from unfiltered audio, lo-fi AF. Um, it, it's probably my favorite uh, lo-fi effect, really nice um, bit crushing and noisy artifacts and stuff like that. So it's fun to make the loops sound more lo-fi with that. And then finally on the master channel here, everything is sent there. So you can see down at the bottom, you can choose which uh, output routing you want um, to send the audio to. Everything is going to mix bus D, the master output here um, from the audio interface. I have Tone Boosters Enhancer set up here. Uh, this is just a nice way to add a little more kind of sparkle and sheen to the sound. Um, it's a nice way to emphasize uh, certain frequency bands that you see here, uh, bass, mid, and treble. Just makes everything sound better. Um, not really sure how or why, to be frank with you, um, but it sounds really good. Also on this master channel, I've got the same two distortions that I mentioned earlier. Saturn and lines there. Um, so I can dial that in on the master channel as well and make everything uh, sound a little more chaotic um, for certain sections. Also the um, peak EQ, uh, four band peak EQ from Chimatica is on there as well for quick EQ adjustments. And then a really nice plugin 
um, highly recommend uh, picking this one up. Uh, it's from a company called Clev Grand, uh, but it's called Grand Finale. It's sort of a, a finishing touch, if you will, on the signal. You can add gain, um, uh, compression, multiband compression. There's a cool little additive signal path here where you can dial in a little bit of distortion and dirt. Um, to the sound and compress that in addition uh, in parallel with the um, the dry signal. Uh, you can affect your stereo width. You can add uh, to the top or to the bottom if you want. Um, and there's also a handy little equalizer here for treble and bass. Just helps to shape things up a little bit before it hits the limiter here on the end. Um, so this is just to make sure nothing gets uh, totally crazy, um, or, you know, volume spikes happen, uh, at the end of the chain. So that is the, that's the session. There's four sound sources, three send returns, um, and the master channel. Now the fun part, um, is when you incorporate other devices using this um, audio interface. Uh, you could, like I said, connect a, a laptop or another tablet um, and incorporate those sounds. But what I'm doing for this particular set is I'm using my iPhone um, as, a, as a MIDI controller on the side. Uh, you can see here I've got two pages set up. In the event I want to use this phone as a, as a looper itself, I've also got for asynchronous loops uh, set up here. So this phone is receiving audio from the iPad through this interface, and I can loop um, on command any audio that I want. Uh, it's a really um, you know, fun way to work. Uh, uh, if my you know, screen here is occupied and I, I can't catch a loop on that um, mix bus C that I mentioned, I can do it here too and send it back to the iPad on its own channel. Um, I've got filtering delay and reverb on here too, uh, to, to affect the sound as needed, but how I use this most of the time, uh, is this second screen here. This is a mixer screen, uh, set up to control the arm session that I just showed you. Um, so I've got, um, faders for all the channels shown here, um, sampler, uh, the um, twin three synth, as well as the play beat drums. Um, they're all available there to mix levels, as well as um, the mix bus sends. Uh, I can change that all here too. Um, and actually, now that I see it, let me go and connect this because it's not connected. There we go. Now we're in business. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so you can see it's it's controlled entirely over Bluetooth. Um, as I adjust the level on my phone, it it adjusts the level in Om. And why I like to do this and how it's helpful. Frequently, I'll find myself, you know, when I'm when I'm in the Om session here and I'm playing around, making noise, or I flip over to Sampler. I lose access to that mixing screen. And so it's nice to be able to have it um, available here so I can do my work here in sampler, but also adjust the level, adjust the sends. Uh, and I don't have to like flip back and forth here between the two screens. I, I always have access to the mixer on my phone. Um, just, you know, it's nice to have that available uh, as needed. And like I said, too, sometimes things get a little cluttered on the screen where, you know, you've got a lot going on and you can't get back to the mixer view um, while you're adjusting parameters and effects in there. So it's good to have this as sort of a backup. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how I'm using the phone as both sort of a auxiliary looper that can catch any audio coming from the iPad. Um, as well as a, a mixer interface to control the levels and settings and on uh, as I go. And I wrote about all this on Substack too. So um, if you know you didn't catch all that or you want to see a little more detail, then um, you can go to that post. And I, 
I have screenshots and a little more detail available there. Um, let's see, what else didn't I mention here? Um, yeah, so the keyboard here on screen, this down here, uh, this, this one on screen is controlling the twin three synth, um, that sound. So uh, I'd like to separate, um, you know, the synth and the piano. Uh, the Korg Nano Key um, keyboard is the one that controls um, the Piano Tech piano. So. Yeah, you can hear, you know, um, it's it's nice to have a just a quick visual guide to know, uh, you know, this is my synth, this is my piano. I could I could just set this up to, you know, control them both, but I like to have a little bit of separation. Also to up here, um, you know, with with uh, piano tech, one of the nice things about it, um, and you'll hear this in context when I start to play, um, it's very responsive. So I do like to have a little more control over velocity than the on-screen uh, keyboard offers. It's it's good to have a dedicated controller for that. Okay, so that is the setup. Um, now we can see it in action. I will play through one of our songs called Tortured Shapes, and you can see how all this stuff interacts together and how I go about um, approaching a song like that. Uh, this is a piece we wrote a couple years ago, um, but it's found our way into most of our sets at this point as the uh, show closer. There's a nice steady driving beat underneath of it that builds and builds and gets really chaotic and noisy um, towards the end. So it's a nice way to, to walk off stage. Um, but, you know, this one starts like a lot of our songs start with a with sort of just an underlying um, uh, quiet drone that fades in at the start using sampler. So I do this all the time. I, I love to loop um, slices of a given sample like that. And just ping pongs back and forth. So I'm using the iPhone to mix this in because obviously I'm not able to see the mixer screen in OM right now. Uh, and I can fade it in to whatever level I want, just with the phone over Bluetooth. So now that that's going, you know, this part of the song just kind of builds some tension. And obviously there are two other guys playing guitar next to me, so I need to be conscious of whatever loops and things that they're adding. So I try to stay on the more minimal side to start this song. Um, and kind of save the best for last towards the end. But, you know, just for the sake of demonstrating things, here's what the twin three synth can sound like. Let's bring the filter down a little bit to start. Fade that in. Throw it to delay and reverb a little bit. Just a really nice, thick, full sound that you can get out of Twin 3. Just a really great synth. Let's throw the samples over to reverb and delay as well. you'll notice on the keyboard here, I've got it set to hold the notes that I press so I don't have to worry about holding a sustain pedal or, you know, doing any extra work to make drones like that. Let's put some bassier tones in there too. So 
so yeah at this point we can start to layer in a few other sounds here's a nice thick string part using the sample that I played with landforms by Slate Nash a beautiful string contact instrument here's another string layer also from landforms That right there is one of my favorite things about Sampler. The ability to loop any gestures that you make. And you can do that multiple times. Really nice way to add movement variation and make a static sample sound interesting. So for instance, that sound is a little, you know, prominent. That's something I wouldn't want playing constantly. It's kind of nice to be able to just make sure that a low volume loop is there. With the gesture recording like that. So now we can start to think about fading in these drums a little bit. Let's get that going in play beat. I'm gonna start with the filter really low so that it fades in quietly underneath of everything. And just let it reveal itself over time. So the drums, it's really fun to throw these through these two um, glitch and stutter effects that I mentioned. Replicant 3 in particular is really great for spicing up a sort of static drum part. Um, on each of the steps in the sequence here, you can choose the likelihood or probability that it will be affected by things like stutter, delay, uh, bit reduction, ring mod, all these, you know, uh, nice effects to add some interesting variation and it becomes a lot more apparent when you start to throw in hi-hats and snares and claps and things like that so let's do that now I'm gonna let in the snare here Glitchcore is a lot of fun too. It's um, it's a nice way to add uh, some more stutter effects on top of what's already happening in Replicant. So when you engage it, it chops things up very dramatically across the grid here. And so as this song progresses and gets you know louder and louder, and tension is building the whole time. What I'm thinking about is how do I slot into the mix and continue to help that build and drive? Um, and so a lot of the things that I do are, are more textural in nature, and that's why I really like to have these uh, saturation and distortion effects available on the drums. It makes them sound quite interesting, you know, in a, in a loud, heavy mix. And especially when you throw it over to the reverb bus. 
everything gets bigger and louder that way. there to let a little more through. whatever audio uh, we send to it. Let's send it some synth sounds just so you can hear what that sounds like. Or what's possible there. And remember, these are all asynchronous, so they're not quantized to any particular meter or bars or anything like that. I can choose to loop whatever I want. Um, whenever I want, and they will start and stop independent of the master clock. Let's throw that one up an octave at uh, two times the rate. Make this one half the rate. And leave this one as is. And I love having that feedback knob available so I can do just that, crank it up, and catch the little swells of audio like that to layer in. It's a great way to add tension and even more noise to a loud piece like this. busy. Um, I don't usually have this many layers going, but uh, just for the sake of demonstration, I thought it would be interesting to show all that. Uh, like I said, there are two guys playing guitar right next to me, so um, more often than not, it's, it's a really loud, busy song to begin with, and so I'm just trying my best to slot in there uh, with those kinds of textural things, samples, pads, uh, drums and percussion that are heavily affected, things to drive it and move it along and keep the tension building and the and the pace um, up. Uh, that song is a lot of fun to play in particular because it gets really loud, um, really heavy and really big over time. And having an interface like this where you've got the mixer levels always available, it's very easy to slide in uh, loops like that on, on a send. Um, you can ride the feedback knob on the delay just with the touch of a finger. Um, everything is within reach at all times. Uh, and it's, it's really easy to just layer and layer and build and build and, and make songs like that interesting. Uh, night after night, we never really play it the same way. It always sounds a little bit different. 
And that's because there's a lot of freedom to do um, basically anything uh, in a setup like this. It can be configured to do whatever you want it to do. Um, it's a lot of fun. So that's that. Um, hope this was, you know, uh, informative. Hope you enjoyed seeing sort of the inner workings of a Hotel Neon set from my vantage point. And uh, also just, you know, how impressive uh, the iPad is as a music making tool. Um, I really think it's uh, just, you know, the possibilities are endless. So if you've got any questions about it or are curious to figure out how it fits into your own setup, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, just shoot me a note uh, and, and check out my Substack. Like I mentioned earlier, I've got a very detailed breakdown of this set that I just showed um, ready to go there. So thanks again for watching and uh, appreciate your time.